Vrikshasana. Vriksha means tree, and in this pose we stand tall and steady like a tree. First, I'm gonna demonstrate, so I'd like you to watch first. Please come at the diagonals, so you can look at me on the diagonal line. I first stand into the asana, make my legs steady and strong, and then I shift my weight to one leg. I bend at the other leg, and bring the sole to the thighs. Then I'll bring my hands overhead. I'll join my hands for Urva Namaskarasana, a forward namaskar. And then I will come down, release my leg, come back to Tadasana. So let's try that together. So let's start in Tadasana. And then shift your weight to your right leg. Bend your left and bring the sole of the foot to the thigh, to the root of the thigh. From here, bring your hands overhead and join your palms. And then you could bring your hands back down. Take the bent leg and release it slowly back down to the ground. Steady back into Dasana. Bring your weight to the left leg. Bend your right leg. Bring the sole to the thigh. Bring the hands overhead. Join the palms for Urban Namaskarasana. And then release your hands down. Release the, the leg, the bent knee, and come to standing. So I would like to demonstrate again and work on one specific action in the pose. So if you can come to the diagram. What I'm gonna ask, what I'm gonna talk about is the, uh, or focus on, is that the bent leg hip tends to rise up. So what to do so we can get level and then compacting the hips to raise up. So, and I notice that not everybody is coming into Urban Namaskar, so this time we'll go into Urban Hastasana, okay? So I bring my weight over to one leg. So can you see how that hip is jutting up? If you want, actually, why don't you come over to this side to jut this up? So what I need to do in order to work on that is press the sole into the thigh move from the inner part of the thigh out to the knee and release the hip down. From there, I can expand the chest or move the sternum. So let's try that together. So bringing your feet together for Tadasana, shift your weight over to your right leg, bend your left, Bring the foot to the root of the thigh. And now, push that foot into the thigh and the thigh into the foot. Extend from the, from the inner part, that root part of the thigh, out to the knee. And release your left hip down. So you want to put your hands on your hips so you can judge that they are coming in, they're leveling. So Maya, if you can level that hip down a little bit more, bring the knee out further to the side. Exactly. And from here, bring your hands, palms facing each other, and then hands overhead for Urva Hastasana, upward hip facing hands. To come out, bring your hands back down, release the bent leg, and we'll go to the other side. So let's shift our weight to our left leg, bend at the right leg, bring the sole of the foot so that the heel comes to the root of the thigh. And if you can't do the root of the thigh, yes, you could also bring it lower here so that you're not on the joint. I'd recommend more on the calf. Okay. And then from here, pushing the calf or the thigh into the foot and the foot resisting into the thigh, move from the root of the thigh out to the knee and release that right hip down. So you're trying to get the right hip in line with the left. Compact your hips together, bring your hands forward, 
palms facing each other, and then hands overhead. Press down on that foot, Urdhva Hastasana, and then to release, bring your hand to your bent leg and release down. Okay, next we're going to go into Utita Parsva Kanasana. Utita means extended, Parsva means side, Kona means angle. You got that? Okay, now let's stagger ourselves. How about every other person pull out from the wall? A great deal. And the people who didn't pull just come out around a foot. Because you will need a foot away from the wall at least. Do we need blocks? And yes, everybody get two blocks. Position the blocks at the back side of your mat, one on each side at the edge of the mat. So often I notice my knee floats. 
So what helps me is to push my arm into my knee and my knee into my arm so they resist one another. And from there I have the stability to lunge further. So let's try that together.
and with the back of the palm, lift up between the shoulder blades. Then I clasp the two fingers, or the two hands, or I grab onto the strap. So let's try that, but first, as we release, bring your hands out, because this is a compression, so that you can stretch your, any compression out in your arms as you come out. And then we come back to all fours to come out as we came in, okay? So let's sit down, come to our knees and our hands, bring our knees together, have our feet on opposite sides of the block, and then come to sitting on the block. Look to see that there's a straight line from your calf down to your ankle to your toes pointing back. From here, lift your abdomen, Expand your chest and bring that strap to your right arm, to your right hand. Lift up in the right arm, unless you don't need the strap, and release your palm down below the nape of your neck. Take your left arm out, thumb facing you down, and swing it up so that the, the back of the hand moves up between the shoulder blades. Now, once here, Push through your hands and pull up through the up elbow and down at the down elbow. And then to come out, release the strap or your hands, stretch your arms out to the side without hitting your neighbor. And then let's go the other way. So let's bring the left arm up overhead. And then bring the palm down to the below the nape of the neck. Right arm out to the side, and then bring the back of that right arm, right hand up the shoulder blades. Clasp the fingers or the strap. Bring the raised elbow in closer to the head. And then release. Stretch both arms as you're coming out. And then Come to all fours once again, and come to my sides. Actually, you can stay where you are, so I'll demonstrate the next part of this. So what we're going to work on, what we will work on in this pose, is how to bring the upper arm um, so that the, the armpit is opening, the armpit chest is opening. So first of all, starting with your arm Bring my hand to the nape of the neck. Then I'll bring my other hand and I'll move that upper arm in towards my face and lift up. So I'm getting opening in my armpit chest. And then I'll bring the other arm around. And then we'll lift in the abdomen, expand the chest, and then release. So let's try that. Sitting back into Varasana. See that your toes are moving, stretching, extending backwards, and then bring your strap if you're using one into your right hand, and lift your arm up, bring your palm down below the nape of your neck. Now use your left arm to turn that flesh of the upper arm towards your face. Lift that arm up from the elbow up. Bring that elbow in close towards your face. So you're bringing this hand over here. Yes, to turn that in and lift it up. There we go. And now bring that left arm out to the side and swing that arm behind you, back of the hand onto between the shoulder blades. Lift up in your abdomen and expand in your chest. And then to come out, release, stretch the arms out to the side without hitting your neighbor, and we'll go the other way. Bring the left arm forward and up, and then the hand, the palm of the hand below the nape of the neck. 
Bring your right hand and bring it over to the upper arm. So make sure that your arm is on the side of your head, not behind. There we go. And turn the upper arm towards your face. So you're going to bring it the other way. Yes, exactly. And then you push the arm up. So does it make more sense? Can you feel that opening along your spine? Okay. And now bring your right hand to the side. And then swing it up so that the back of the hand comes to the, between the shoulder blades. Clasp the strap of the hands. Lift up your abdomen and expand your chest. Breathe, and then release. Stretch those arms out. And next we're going to go into, we go into a Sarvangasana. Sarvangasana. So I will demonstrate the setup first. Can I talk about some things here? Sure. Salamba Sarvangasana 1. Salamba so means supported. Sarvangasana means whole body. So this is, this is a pose that supports health and healing throughout the whole body. Okay. So to start, I'll sit with my feet against the wall and my setup. So we'll bring the mat closer to the wall because we're going to use the wall for this pose. The mat will come right towards the back. So I keep lining it up here. Then I bring the blankets rounded edge facing forward. And I'm going to stair step three blankets. If you've done this pose and are well acquainted with it, if you've done it but you're not as well acquainted with it and you feel sick, four blankets. And stair step them up. Okay? So why don't we all start with that? So we're going to keep them folded like they were in the... So first, Set your mat up so that the front edge of the mat is lining up with your buttocks, the back of your buttocks, as you sit with your feet up against the wall. Then bring your blankets and stack them up with a slight stair step. So I'm going to ask you to sit next to me and that's the only way to start. Um, or are you getting there? Is um, this right? No. <laughs> is this right? It is right, but you don't want to have the mat folded quite yet. Okay. So, right here. And then we're going to pop that. You got it. It's a slight difference in our surface. There, so go to the wall. Yes. And then everybody have your strap nearby as well. furthest out is the one foot on the bottom. Because otherwise it's very easy to roll off the top. Okay. I'm just going to bring the bottom one a little forward. Because otherwise it can roll right off the top. It actually does make a difference once you're on there. Okay. Strap. Everybody put a loop in your strap and measure that loop to be Around an inch or so wider than your shoulder blades, than your than the inner shoulders, than the outsides of your shoulders. Okay. I'll bring the strap to the top of my or the bottom of my upper arm. So first I start by rolling my shoulder onto the ground. I bring my feet uh, to the wall, and then with my back of my head. On the floor, I have around a thumb's width away from, or a thumb's length away from the front of the mat for my upper shoulders. 
Now I push through my hands to lift my hips. Once we're here, start rolling, tucking those shoulders under. So you see how my shoulder blade is tucking under and I'm coming to the tops of my shoulders. Then I'll bring the strap on. I'll bring the rest of the strap onto the other arm. And you see, I walk my hands underneath my upper back. So I'm walking my hands closer to my shoulders. As I lift through my upper arms, I lift my hips and my buttocks up. I'll bring one leg up and then the other leg up. I push through my forearms again, my upper arms again, to bring my sternum forward and to lift my buttocks up towards my feet. To come down one foot to the wall. So this is a little far out for me. And then the other foot to the wall. And then I'll release the strap and start easing back down. One vertebrae after the other. To come out, push your feet against the wall, bring your shoulders to the blankets. And then we're going to go into a Shavasana. So either fold your legs in that cross-legged position like this, and we'll, I'll talk you through that. And then when we come out of that, we'll roll to the side. Kelsey, could we set up this mat for your height or for mine? Yours. Okay. I would say if everybody wants to push their mats in a little bit, it seems like the standard I was working with is a little far away from the wall. So just like an inch. <laughs> mine would be a, about an inch forward, because I think you went a couple of inches. Yeah. Great. Okay. Everybody, one prop I left out. No, I didn't leave that. Yeah, we don't need it for this because we're going right. Yeah. So bring your strap to the um, where your upper arm and elbow meet. And now, okay, so if everybody could come to, to roll to your side, your left side, to come up to sitting, use your hands to come up to sitting, we're going to go into this together because I want you to be closer towards the wall. So I want you to start bringing your left, or yes, your left shoulder onto the, onto the blankets, but around two inches from the front of the blanket. Then bring the other shoulder down. Okay, there we go. And then from here, bring your feet on to the back of your head on the floor. Bring your feet onto the wall. And then push through your feet to raise your hips. Bring the strap to the other elbow. Push your hands and your feet. Bring your strap to the elbow. And now bring your palms to your back. And walk your hands. Okay. I'm going to ask you to come down. You're quite far away. So why don't you release oh. down? Roll to one side. And then if everybody could hold for one minute, walking their hands down their back, lift your hips up, and then bring one leg forward, reach up to the sky with that leg, up to the ceiling with that leg, and then bring the next leg. So we're going to come into the full Salamba Sarvangasana. Pushing through your upper arm, lift your hips up and then bring your buttocks up towards the ceiling. Push those thighs back towards the white wall. Okay. And then Push up through the balls of your feet. Level those, that ball of the foot so that the inner, the big toe mound and the little toe mound are on the same plane lifting up to the ceiling. Then bend one leg, bend your right leg, bring it back to the wall. Bend your left leg, bring it back to the wall. And then take your strap off one arm. And slowly come down one vertebrae after the other. <laughs> so use your feet.
to push your shoulders off of your blankets. Come further off your blankets so your buttocks is fully on the floor. Now you can either have your feet extended forward or cross your legs. Move, actually bring your hands to the top of your buttocks and move that buttocks flush towards the white walls and lengthen the lower back on the ground. Now with your palms facing up and to your sides, roll that thumb towards the floor, which will inspire the shoulders. Now move that shoulder so that you knit the shoulder blades together onto your back and expand your chest. If anybody needs a blanket, please raise a finger or a hand. And, and close your eyes. We had swift poses. You moved and did a lot of work. So let the effect of the asanas, Thank you. the effect of the asanas to quiet your mind, take hold. Release any holding you have in your abdomen. And soften from the outside of your body inward. Bring one hand and the other to your abdomen. Roll to your right side. Use your arms as a pillow for your head. Take a moment from this sweet asana. And then use your hands. Press against the floor with the palms. And raise your hands slowly. 